Hello fellow musicians and rock stars, uh, Paul Walker here, the founder of All Music Promotions. And today I just wanted to quickly just talk to you about, I guess, how do you as an unsigned artist, you know, as an undiscovered band, go about growing your fan base? Because ultimately, you know, that's what it's about for you, especially in these early stages. You know, you want to get your music you know, in front of as many different people, in front of as many different ears as you can, so that people will hopefully, you know, listen to your music, obviously like it, and then become your fan, which will ultimately lead them to, you know, purchasing your music and your albums, your merchandise, and come and seeing you at live shows. That's, you know, ultimately what, you know, what it's about and how the cycle works. And what I want to specifically talk about today is, you know, how to grow your fan base, uh, but I guess maybe do it in, uh, you know, the reverse order of what naturally seems to happen. And what I mean by that is, you know, a lot of fans, if they discover your music, you know, they go directly to Facebook. And, you know, Facebook is part of the solution, it's not the solution, okay? And what I'm going to talk about today is how to get more fans on Facebook using the back door to Facebook, okay? So, what do I mean by that? Well, firstly, let's put yourselves, you know, back into the shoes of being a fan, okay? So, you'll have your own individual, individual music or artists that you enjoy, okay? Now, I want you to remember back to when you first discovered that band. All right, so for argument's sake, we'll say, uh, who's a big band? We'll say, we'll say Pink, all right? Pretend you're, you're a fan of Pink. You know, you obviously love what she does. You know, you go see her awesome live shows and you buy all her music that, when, you know, when she releases an album. But how did you first discover Pink? Well, maybe you just happened to hear one of her songs on the radio when you were driving in the car or you're at work. Or, you know, you flicked onto a music channel and, you know, there was a film clip. Or maybe someone you knew, knew or playing a band with or someone who, you know, you talk to about music, you know, gave you, you know, a link to, you know, her iTunes or maybe gave you a burnt CD of, of a couple of her songs or her album. However that happened at one point in phase one is you discovered that band or that musical artist, you discovered Pink, all right? It's the same thing for you, all right, as a, as a music, as an artist now. How do you get your potential fans to discover you so that they go through three, three phases, okay? So phase one is, you know, for them to discover your music. And you do that through, you know, your MP3s, through your YouTube videos, uh, you know, and what I believe is probably the more powerful way is through articles and blog posts by, you know, obviously having a blog set up for your band or your artist name, okay? Once those fans start listening to your music, obviously they're getting more immersed and they really like your music, what's the next step? Well, the next step is they want to connect with you and, you know, they want to go to a live concert, you know, whether it's, you know, you're playing Madison Square Garden or you're still playing your local kind of pubs and clubs in your town or your state. Either way, those fans want to, you know, immerse with you and connect with you on that live atmosphere level, okay? So step number two is, is connecting with them in a live gig, a live show arena. And then the next step for, you know, a lot of fans, not all your fans, but a lot of them, they go through to step number three, which is the meet and greet, where, you know, this is where they're your loyal and diehard fans, okay? They want to meet you in person, they want to talk to you, they want to know more about you as a musician, as an artist. And for you as an artist, you know, you get a chance to talk to your fans, you know, find out what they really love about you, maybe what they not so much like about you, but what really makes them that diehard fan so you can continue to keep duplicating whatever that thing is that makes them get to that point. So you can obviously start attracting more of those, you know, loyal and diehard fans, you know, to your music. So how do you as an unsigned artist go get your fans to go through these three phases? Well, let's think of it as a fan, what typically happens, okay? So if I'm in, you know, if I'm a fan and I want to go look for you as an artist, how would I find you if I don't know who you are? I don't even know that you exist, but I want to find some new music, okay? Well, hopefully, as I said, you've got, you know, some songs, you've got some YouTube videos out there. But what typically happens is if I hear one of your songs, you know, maybe my friend gives me a link or, you know, I just happen to hear one of your songs on an internet radio station or whatever, is your fans over here, you know, your potential fans, they go in reverse order, so they go to step number three, which is they want to meet you, they want to know you, okay? They want to try and, you know, find out more about you. But if you don't have things in place and set up, it's going to be pretty hard for them. 
But as I say, they'll go to here and they'll go to the meat and green. I'll just put these in a different color to highlight. So they go to here, step three, which is the meet and greet. What I call the meet and greet phase, which is Facebook, okay? So a lot of your potential fans directly go to Facebook first up. Now that's not so much of a bad thing, but I don't think it's the best solution for you because Facebook's pretty limited in what it can allow a potential fan to find you as an artist that they don't even know about, how you can engage with them and offer them, you know, more, you know? So, so what typically happens is they'll go to Facebook first, you know, you might have, you know, a couple of other songs up there or you might have, you know, some YouTube videos just posted in, in your news feed and maybe a couple of pictures and stuff. But they can't really engage with you that much because they don't really know who you are and kind of what you stand for yet as, you know, as a person, as an artist, as a, as a brand, okay? So typically what happens then is they'll go to Google, you know, they at least know your name or your band name. So they, you know, type that into Google and what spits out? Well, hopefully it spits out some more YouTube videos or maybe you've got some songs up on SoundCloud, stuff like that. But sometimes they're not always going to rank in Google just because, you know, you may not have enough followers, enough people, you know, connecting with you in that live area where they can watch your videos, okay? So it comes a little bit hard that way. So as I said, we're going in reverse order. They then try and connect with you, you know, on a live arena. And as I said, I see this happen all the time with, you know, new bands, new artists. Is you try and tell them that you've got a live gig, okay? Which is, which is fine, you know, people want to, you know, see you live, but if they don't know who you are, they're probably going to be less enticed to come along to your gig. And I'm sure you've probably experienced this. And I know that you've probably worked with, you know, other bands in your town or whatever, and you try and put on, you know, a bill where there's three or four bands of the same sort of genre of music saying, hey, we're, you know, we're all rock bands or we're all metal bands or we're all indie alternative bands, you know, come to this gig. Yeah, that, that works sometimes, but probably not as effective as what it could be. Because again, if, if I'm an unknown fan of yours, I don't know who you are and what you're offering, you know, I'm going to be less inclined to go to a live gig where I might have to pay five, 10, 20 bucks to get in the door to see a couple of bands that ultimately I may not like, I may not enjoy, and you know, I just may not get anything out of it. So you got to realize that that's, you know, sometimes the mentality of what your fans are thinking, okay? So you try and entice them with a live gig, it doesn't always work for you. And the last thing you try and do is, you know, give them actually what they want. First up is, you know, your MP3s, you know, your videos on YouTube. And more importantly, blog posts. Okay? And why do I say blog posts so much? Is because, you know, at that point, you know, they really want to find out more about, as I said, who you are as a person, you know, your personality, then who you are as a musical act, you know, what do you stand for? What type of music do you play? What is your brand? What is it that you're promoting and putting out to the world? And by going in this reverse order, you're going to get a lot of fans that get to the, the first up here of Facebook. They're not going to be able to engage with you on this type of level. So they'll leave and they'll go find somewhere else. Or they might sort of stick around and, you know, maybe they can get to a live gig that you've got in a local town for them to, to come visit you. And again, maybe they like your music there and they, you know, you put on a really awesome show that you actually, you know, you are able to cap capture them and captivate them that way. Yeah, that can happen. And then third and finally, once you've maybe got a few of these uh, fans that have hung on, then you start telling them about who you are as a personality and as a person. And then, you know, by this point, hopefully they'll like you enough that they are going to stick around. But you're losing far more fans, you know, in this phase and then that phase before you even get to here. So it's reverse psychology. You know, this is to say you want to get them to discover with you first through all these things, through all these touch points. Then bring them to a live gig because if they know who you are, they enjoy your music, they know who you are as a person, they kind of get a sense of who you are, they're going to come to this live gig and they're going to bring their friends with you. So you're going to have more people, you know, coming to your shows and, uh, you know, spreading the music for you. And then at that point, you know, then they'll come to your Facebook page and start engaging more. Okay, so can you see how that works and how that's going to be more beneficial to you as an unsigned artist, as an undiscovered band to 
as I said, get more fans, but get fans that are gonna stick around and follow through these three phases. And that's ultimately what it's about. And if I break it down real simple for you, how this really actually works, it's, it comes down to this. See, step one is you're talking Oh, Mr. Nell, you're talking to your fans, okay? So you're talking to your fans with all the different touch points that you have, your songs, YouTube videos, articles, blog posts, that type of thing, okay? Step number two, by getting into a live gig, as I said, you're connecting with them. All right, you're connecting with them on a, on a, on a human element, on a social level that as I said, they, they're vibing off that subconscious vibe that, you know, the energy and stuff that you're putting out from a live show. And thirdly, the meet and greet, you know, they're connecting with you on Facebook, you're engaging with them, you're actually talking with your fans, okay? So when you put up a, a Facebook post, they already know who you are, they know what you're about, they already get what you're talking about or why you would put a post on Facebook, they, they already get that. So when they, you know, because you're talking directly with them, then they start conversing with the other fans on your page. So can you see how that's certainly, I believe, more powerful, more beneficial to you as, as I said, an un undiscovered artist, as an unsigned band, to go through these three phases in that order will keep your fan retention a lot higher but also start engaging them more with Facebook which is also what Facebook wants they want more engagement on your page therefore your page will then start naturally ranking a lot higher having a lot more activity that you'll then start accumulating fans for free pretty powerful but as I said pretty simple stuff but unfortunately I do see it all the time with you know the bands and artists that I talk about and help with so unfortunately, they tend to go in this reverse order of trying to get them onto Facebook, they don't really know what you're talking about, then you try and get them to a live gig because you think that they're a fan of yours because you know they've liked your Facebook page, but ultimately, they kind of really don't know who you are, what your music is. And then thirdly, once you get to that, you know, you get through those two phases, if you've still got some fans that are you know hanging around, then you try and tell them who you are as a person. No, you need to flip that, okay? Tell them who you are as a person, what you're into, what your interests are, what you like doing in your time off when you're not playing music, what you like about so much about your music. You know, engage with them on that level. Then get them to your live gigs where they can, as I said, be one with you in that live atmosphere. They're gonna love it, they're gonna bring more friends because they already know, like you and trust you. And then thirdly, you know, they wanna meet you, they wanna to talk to you and you can do that through Facebook, you know, you might be able to meet every single you know, fan individually, especially if fans live in different states or different countries. But at least with Facebook, when you start engaging and talking with them directly on Facebook, they know who you are, they know what you're about, so they're more inclined to join the conversation and be a part of, you know, who you are and what you're doing. All right, guys, well, as I said, that's my, uh, you know, my method, my secret way of getting more fans on Facebook through the back door of Facebook. And it comes down to, as I said, blogging and you know this uh, discovery touch points, as I call them. All right, well, if you like this, uh, please click below this video. I will have uh, a link to my website and my blog where you can find out a lot more trainings. For those of you watching this on a tab or a smartphone, I'll put up a link now on the screen where you can go and you know grab those, uh, those blog posts and, as I said, my free training on my websites as well. So, as I said, I hope you guys got a lot out of that. Uh, I really hope it works for you. And as I said, I hope you guys start implementing this. If you're kind of doing it in this reverse order, you know, maybe try this order first. And, uh, you know, hopefully that'll work for you a lot better. And as I said, give you a lot more better fan retention and, you know, get your fans to that loyal, you know, diehard phase of, of where you want them to be. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much. This is Paul Walker signing out from uh, All Music Promotions. And uh, as I say, click those links below to get more of my training, find out more about me and what we do here at All Music Promotions and helping, you know, unsigned bands and undiscovered artists, you know, get discovered. So thanks so much. And, uh, you know, hopefully, guys, 
I'll see you on the stages of the world. All right, guys. Bye.